right here. Raise your arms up. Reach up to the heavens and bow your head. Hand and release. Twist to your right. Release and twist to your left. Release. Bring your legs out in front of you and pump your thigh muscles. So today, <clears throat> we're going to work on the parts of the body that um, will benefit from the back bends. We don't need to get into the big back bends, but we want to work on getting ready for them. Uh, breaking down any posture into its elements can be just as beneficial as working on the posture itself. So sometimes, let's do Baba Konasana and we'll finish that story. Sometimes it isn't necessary the pose itself that we need to get ourselves into, but just break down each of those pieces of each of those parts and work on them and we'll get the same effect. So we'll be looking at what we need to do to get ready for Urvadhanarasana, the upper facing bow pose, without even considering uh, or worrying that we need to be able to do it or not. Bring your legs together, stretch your legs out. Let's move into Adamukha Shvanasana, downward facing dog pose. Wiggle around a little bit in your dog. Keep the shoulder blades wide. The, that is important in back bends where the arms are part of the pillars of the pose. The shoulder blades, when they are pulling wide apart, that's how they become stable and can bear weight. Full posture, full Adhanukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Lift your head, inhale, and exhale, step up to the front of your mat. And then release the back body <laughs> into Uttanasana. Then bend your knees and inhale, come all the way up, hands together, and down to your heart. Now, let's do the Surya Namaskar, the classical form but a little slow when we get to lunges and cobra so that we hold the back bend and we hold the lunges for the hip flexor stretches. So we'll move um, a little slower than if we were just doing each step on part of the breath, like just the inhale or just the exhale. In case we want to use blocks for the lunges, we'll have those at the front of the mat. In case we want a blanket for our knees, we'll have that in the middle of the mat. Then step up to the front of your mat with your feet together and your hands at your heart. Bow the head. Inhale, stretch out. Open the whole front body. Exhale, bend the knees, come into the forward bend. Inhale, the half forward bend. Exhale, the right leg will step back, knee is down. Remember, we'll pause here so that we can open up the hip flexors. Because if they're tight, then the back bend will have to go somewhere else. So uh, we don't want it to go into the low back. We don't want it to go into the neck or the shoulders. Uh, we want to go into all the places it's supposed to go. Now take a deep breath and use the exhale to step the left leg back into a plank. Now if there's any issues with the shoulders or the wrist, you can stay on your knees. Otherwise, we're up on a plank. Inhale. And then exhale. We all come down the knees, the chest, and the chin into what we call a Ashtanga Namaskarasana. And when we stretch out and lift up into Sarpasana, hold for just a moment. It is a, sorry, this block for it. It is the back bend that is just activated by using your upper back muscles, no pressure. This begins to wake up the back extensor muscles, which will be working very hard to help you in back bends. Now exhale, bow your head. And now inhale, Bhujangasana. And as you're coming up into Bhujangasana, keep the shoulder blades down your back, the shoulder blades moving forward to take the thoracic spine to the heart, 
and the sacrum to the knees, creating as much space between those two points of your spinal column as much as possible. And then as you exhale, down you come and push back into downward facing dog with the legs together. Lift your head, inhaling. And exhale, step the right foot all the way to the front of the mat and help it if it doesn't make it there in one big swipe. Come on up on your fingertips, lunge. Again, we're going to hold it for just a breath or two. <clears throat> we're ready to step back into the forward bend. Take a deep breath with me and use your exhale to take your left foot up to the front of the mat Bring the feet together, have the knees bent, drop the hips, and inhale all the way up, hands down to the heart. Reaching up. Exhaling, Uttanasana, bend your knees for the safety of your back, and then straighten the legs and straighten the spine. Inhale here, exhale, left leg back. Pause in the Vanarasana, the lunge again. This is the point where if you need a little bit extra height, you bring your blocks onto the mat, especially since we're going to stay for a breath or two. Now let's move those blocks off to the mat if we're using them and come into the plank. Exhaling, the right leg shoots back, the feet and legs are together. Inhale, exhale, Ashtanga Namaskarasana again. Inhale, back into Sarpasana. This time, not going to hold it, going to bow the head, exhaling, and full Bhujangasana, but we will hold the Bhujangasana, giving yourself a chance to separate those two points again. Sacrum going one way, and the space between the shoulder blades going the other. The further you can get those two points away from each other, the more the spine will move into the body and the spine will bend into a lovely back bend. Exhaling down we come and push back in the downward facing dog. Inhaling, lift your head and exhaling the left foot forward and into Vanarasana we go again. Staying here on fingertips are blocks for more high. Knee over ankle. Opening the front right groin again. Inhale and exhale. Step the right foot forward. Back in the forward bend. Bend the knees, drop the hips, palms together, inhale, come off the way up, and bring your hands to your heart. Good. Let's continue to warm up with standing postures. So if I were to sequence a class thinking back bends, what are the most important ones for back bends? I would definitely put Side angle pose in there because it's a wonderful lengthening for the side of the body. Trikonasana, prepare for side angle pose. Partial konasana, Virabhadrasana one, again, another hip flexor stretch. And it's always good to unwind the tension in the paraspinal. So I'll put part of each trikonasana in there too, revolve triangle pose. So let's do those four standing postures. Triangle pose first. <clears throat> On the inhalation, step your feet wide apart. Turn your left foot in and your right leg out. Contract your thigh muscles, reach out over your right leg and bring your hand down to the block. And then check to make sure that you've got all the little pieces of this posture together. And plus we want to wait in case you had to go get your props or blocks. Something's not quite in the right place or you needed to move your body up against a wall. Because the backs of the legs, which are the extensor muscles, have to work so hard in back bends, especially the ones like bow pose and upper facing bow, it is a wonderful idea to get those muscles opened up. Inhale up you come, and triangle pose will help you with that. Right foot in, left leg out. Stretch out over the left leg and repeat to the other side.
So all the little things you know, and remembering the reason why, I'm using this pose to help get the back body, the, at least the legs and the hips, ready for back bends. Because something that's already tight, that then has to make really super strong contractions, will only get tighter. So our hamstrings in the work, during the work of back bends will become stronger, but shorter. Inhale up you come, turn your feet forward, bend the knees, inhale, exhale, step up your feet together, Tadasana. Utita Pajokonasana, extended side angle pose. Bend the knees and inhale, step your feet wide, four feet apart, left foot in, right leg out. Exhale, bend the right knee, and now your hand is going to come down to the floor of the block, and the left arm is going to shoot over your head. So remember, in uh, the back bends, the side body is going to have to be open for back bending and back bending until you cannot stand yourself anymore. That would be wonderful with a three hour class, right? But this opens up the lateral part of the body that could be tight, that would interfere, like the lats right here in the arm. And so we'll do a stretch for them again soon, but this is getting us preliminary, a preliminary uh, readiness. This rib cage here has got to open up. The waist, the obliques got to open up. Inhale up you come. Other side. Exhaling. Inhale, up you come, turn your feet forward, bend your knees, inhale, exhale, step your feet, or jump your feet together, back into Tadasana. Virabhadrasana 1, I don't need these blocks on my mat, just to make sure they're not in my way, I'll set them off to the side. <clears throat> I don't know all the levels for sure of everyone, so let's go into this a little methodically, let's sort of step back a little bit and go into it a different way than if we already knew everything we needed to know. Because this is a challenging standing posture. Hands on your hips. Take a deep breath, inhale. And as you're inhaling, step your feet to about. It's a four foot stance posture, but sometimes because of tightness, it's good to go about three and a half or a little bit wider, somewhere between three and a half and four. Then your left leg is gonna turn in well so that your hip will turn to the right. So the whole pelvis was facing this way and now faces to the right. So with your hands on your hips to use them as feedback, bend your right knee. Now, if you can see yourself by chance in the camera uh, on your um, computer screen, you could see whether your knee has overshot or if it's underbent. So for me, I want to put my knee right there. Now, I also could probably go a little bit wide with my stance. I'm just going to wiggle the left foot back a little bit. Now, the, the pelvis is level, both of my hip points face right, arms up to the side. If I've got good balance, turn the palms up and reach the arms overhead. In this posture, more than any standing pose, and we should do it in every one, but for sure in this one, lift the pit of the abdomen, pull it up, 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 up towards your heart, and keep your shoulder blades wide and the arms reaching up. These shoulders, again, will have to open for the back bend. And once again, we're trying to open up that right hip flex. So that's the back leg. It's going back. So make sure that the um, right thigh muscle presses to the bone and the heel, the right heel presses down. So really those four things, right thigh muscle to the bone, right heel to the floor, pitch of the abdomen to the heart, shoulder blades wide and up. Now hands to the hips, straighten the right leg and turn forward and exhale. Let's do the other side. If your feet sneak together, mine did a little bit. My stance narrowed a little bit, so I'm taking my feet back wide again. Right leg, turn, 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 turn. The left leg, turn, turn, turn. Now I'm facing the left. And I'm going to check. Left hand to the hip. Let's check. Or let's right. Your right hand to the right hip. And check. 
Seems to be okay. Bend the knee and let's chat. Let's peek down there if we can do it to make sure that we didn't overshoot and make the knee really unsafe and wobbly and that the back leg is in position. Now let's see, is my thigh muscle pressed to the bone, left, I'm sorry, right, right thigh bone muscle to the bone, right heel into the earth, then arms out to the side, palms up, stretch the arms. Add the lift of the pit of the abdomen if you're not doing it already, and pull the shoulder blades wide and reach up. In this posture, eventually we look up, right? We've had that conversation before, but we don't want anyone's neck to feel crunchy. So that's why I look straight ahead. It's just to remind you, you can opt to keep the neck long. And then lower the hands to the hips, straighten the left leg. And then turn your feet forward, bend the knees, inhale, exhale, step your feet together. Oh, that really warms you up good, doesn't it? That makes you ready for anything yet to come, which is Parivita Trikonasana. I know, I know what happens in Parivita Trikonasana. Some of you say, I, I, I've got to go to the restroom. But you know, over the years, it has really become one of my favorite postures because it does so much. One pose with so much value hamstrings, hips, spinal twist, arms, chest, and shoulders. So let's get the block set up. Some of you are so open, you can probably put the blocks behind the legs. Now, what will happen is I'm gonna face you. That means when I'm in the posture, my back will be to you. But you all know enough that that will be fine. So again, the blocks to the front of that, unless you're very open and seasoned and know how to get your torso over your leg. So your uh, torso will be over your right leg since we're going to the right first. Again, we may have multiple levels of practitioners, and so we want to be a little bit methodical coming into this practice. Let's start with our hands on our hips. Inhale, step the feet wide apart. Turn that left leg in like you did in Warrior, and take your right leg out. So now, once again, just like the Warrior, we check to make sure the pelvis is level, facing the right. Let's take that left arm up, inhaling, and exhale down, and place the hand on the block or the floor if you're open, and then begin to turn towards the wall behind you, what was behind you. You could turn around if you wanted to, to face the computer, or you could be facing away like me. Uh, last time, I turned around and did it, and ended up facing, but I said, tonight I'm going to do it a little different and just face away since we're level two. I've taken the left arm up, I mean the right arm up, you may not can see, but if you peeked at me, you would see that I'm now with the one hand on the block and the other arm reaching up in the opposite direction. Now, this coming out of this pose is tricky. It's easy to be wobbly because the feet have to spin at the same time that you come up. So let's give it a try. Spin and come up. Ah, oh, we did it. Didn't we? Did anyone fall? Uh, don't tell me. Let me just believe that we all got out okay. Hands <laughs> back on your hips. Right leg turns in. The left leg turns out. Now lift your right arm. Inhale and exhale. Bend forward. Place your hand on the block and begin to turn, turn, turn until you're facing the back of the room. And go, the twist is as much as you can give us. Don't over twist. The lumbar spine won't twist much. So if we start forcing it, it really gets crunchy in the slow back part. And then the right arm comes up. Ah, excuse me, left arm. So this posture is going to get the spinal muscles ready for the back bends. It's rid of some of the tension so that we can back bend more freely. Okay, this is the tricky part. Inhaling, come in. The legs are spinning. You're coming up. Did you make it safely? Bend the knees, inhale and exhale. Bring your legs together and lower your arms by your side. And feel, 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 feel. Now let's do the arm next, uh, we recently, and I don't remember what class it was, 
we shut the strap in the top of the door and did the top arm of the cow's face first. <clears throat> but the tricky part about that is it's nice. <coughs> Excuse me. It gets the lats. It gets the uh, assistance, the assistant muscle of the lats, the teres major, but it doesn't get the tricep. If we were at, a, at the yoga wall, we would actually take the belt and snap it at level four from the floor or level three. Oh, well, look what's about at level three, a doorknob. So I'm going to take my trusty belt and make a little loop that fits around my doorknob. Now, if you say, I don't have a doorknob, Terry, or when I go to your room, I have to go downstairs to a whole other room and I'll be gone. I will know what you're up to. You can always make that little loop if you have an eight foot belt like that. You see that little loop? And do the variation with some of you done when you just stand on the belt, stand on it, and then you do it like this. You see? Now you have the tricep involved. But I also want everyone to have this in their practice. So here's my doorknob. Yep, you can see me. I'm going to tighten it around the doorknob. It just won't come off. It just, it's just, the door is shut. Now it does open up this way, but it is locked. <clears throat> I checked before because <laughs> I don't want to be doing this <clears throat> and embarrass myself. So now I'm going to do the, my left arm since this is the one that's up. And so you can mirror me. If you can't, if you're in another room, and you can do whatever you want to, whichever arm, because I'm going to give you the instructions um, without doing left and right. So you have this one arm up, and the arm bone, the upper arm bone, is as close to your face as you can get it, and have it feeling like it's rolling towards the face. And as it rolls towards the face, the shoulder blade should come away from the spine. In the back by shoulder blades going away from the spine. And then it goes up with the elbow like we did in Warrior One. It goes up. And then you lean forward and the shoulder blade goes into the body. Now what we're looking for is that since the hand is going down more, the elbow is bent more, and so the tricep is also getting lengthened. There's the long head of the tricep, of the three heads, that is the most problematic because it is attachment on the scapula. We really sometimes need to pay attention to that and get it to link them too. Okay, let's let that go and do the other side. So whichever side you're doing, switch to the other side. And now make sure that that arm is toward your face and you can be standing on this bell and doing this. And if you say, I don't have a, I can't stand on the belt, I don't have a doorknob, I can't shut it in the door, you can always do the classical cow's face pose. But this method really gives you more resistance for a deeper stretch. Okay, shoulder blade away from the spine. It's going to uh, the wall beside you. Then it goes up, 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 up towards the ceiling. And then you lean, which takes the shoulder blade in. And you just also want to notice that a little bit of the tricep is getting stretched also. It's really difficult to do the back bends well if the shoulders are tight, because it's like the hip flex is being tight. So if this is tight and this is tight, then the back bend has to go somewhere else. So we'll go into your lower back. So Paying attention to how well we can get these places open is very valuable. Even if you just do bocos, just holding the ankles and lifting up from the floor from being on your belly. And then release. Good. So we're going to leave the arms now. But in that particular practice, we are going to do the arms again in Paryakasana. Now, Paryakasana is really just a variation of the actual pose. It's um, We've done this recently too with, with um, on the Zoom practices where we were lying on a block and we take the arms over. But there's one thing that we'll do a little different tonight. We're belting the arms. And the reason for that is it gives us a little, when you push out against the belt, it helps the arms to stay straight and you're gonna get a better stretch. So I'm just gonna use a different belt, leaving that belt right there. <clears throat> I'm getting me a different belt. You, 
can undo the oneness on the door because that might be your only bell. If you have a necktie, you just can tie it in a knot. But before you make that commitment to tie the belt, the necktie or not, you want it to be shoulder distance apart, right above the elbows. That's a little wide. By the way, if your shoulders are tight, a little wide is good. And if you have a shoulder injury where you're going like this with your arms, shoulder distance apart, and you get right here and you get stuck. But if you went over here and went click, boom, the arms will keep going. That's another reason to go a little wide. There is a chance that a lot of little clicks and pops and things that um, the shoulder tends to do will go away when you push out. Creating that resistance creates um, extra muscle contractions that then help you when you're taking your arms overhead. Okay, that's pretty good. So let's slide on the brick. Um, don't forget, you don't have to be in the highest level. You can come down here and practice this with between the shoulder blades. And then I've got this one for the head, and I can even put a blanket on top of that. Add some padding. If you do this Pryangasana, and the edge of the block is poking in the, uh, like on a spinous process, the little things that poke out on the back of the vertebrae, sometimes all you have to do is move a little up or a little down. Um, away from that edge, and you'll find a comfortable place. If you cannot, you might either, again, want to go lower to practice or put a blanket on there. Because sometimes we are stuck in the area that that falls in, and so it's not comfortable. And then, of course, make the neck comfortable by elevating that block. I don't need anything else but that, so I'm going to go on back. I get my uh, belt in place. I don't put it on yet because I'm going to use my arms at first to help me get that block in the right place. So you got to lift and shift and jiggle and squirm, get the block for the head in the right place. It feels good. Now, I know that sometimes in class people say, is the block in the right place? Is the block in the right place? And I'm not around to see. It's one of the things I hate about the Zoom classes, but I love them too because I love we can be together. But I want you to determine if it's in the right place. Use your own sensory perception ability. Is it between your shoulder blades? Is it behind your breastbone? Then it is in the right place. Then take your belt and place your arms. Now, we go up above the elbows if we can. And then if you start to take the arms overhead and the belt gets stuck on your head, then it should be on the lower side of the elbows. So push out and take the arms overhead. My arms are long enough that I miss the head and go right over the head. And then I have to move that chair a little bit out of it. Sorry, there's a little bit of loud noise with that. And now I'm ready. I just keep reaching with my arms and I can feel the armpit, the outer armpit muscle lengthen. I can feel the lats all across my back because they go from the shoulder, they attach to your shoulder bone, come across the armpit, go down to the, um, the um, lower thoracic spine, they're attached all the way down to the lower thoracic spine, and then uh, the thoracolumbar fascia and into the pelvis. So it's a big, big muscle covers a lot of the back. I'm going to stretch the legs out now and press them down. That feels nice. As the legs press down, the spine recoils up. Now, if the blocks are too hard for anyone, don't give up. Don't just sit there and watch. Roll a blanket up and lie over a rolled blanket. You've all been with me. You all know how to do that. Push out. Push out. This will keep your arms active. Sometimes we get in this position and we just let the arms start to relax and the elbows will bend. That's not what we're looking for at this point. Now, don't worry, we will bend the elbows, but that's in just a moment. The combination of opening the shoulders with the thoracic spine is incredibly beneficial in our back bones. Now, bring the arms over your head and remove the belt, but don't get up yet. Don't get up yet. Hold your elbows, cross your forearms like I dream a genie, and then take the arms in your head. 
So we're doing the stretch again this time with the elbows in a bent position. That's why we stressed in the first one, do it with the elbows straight. Now do it with the elbows bent. And now switch the cross of the forearms and hold it for a few more breaths. Before you come up, take the arms back up, see that they're straight, no belt, and stretch over your head. Stretch, reach, press the legs down, reach the arms more. And then bring your arms beside you and lift yourself up. Now, if you have to lie sideways to get off, that'll be fine. But be careful when you're twisting from out of this position. But sometimes we have to do that because we don't have the ability to lift straight up. Then remove the blocks and go ahead and lie down for just a moment. to Let everything digest into the nervous system and the muscles. You just feel your back body sinking on the floor. So while we're resting for just a moment, let's ponder what should we do next? Oh, that's right. He wouldn't dare make us do Ekapada Suttadarasana on the Zoom class, would he? Well, of course I can't make you, but I am going to suggest that you do it because it is really the most powerful opening to help prepare the, the legs and hips for back bends. But let's go ahead and bend the knees and roll a bit to the side and just make sure that we have uh, some options because I know that there are knee issues abound and also um, it could be even some back issues. So the um, standing quad stretch is good as long as you keep the hip flexors also. So open. So when you catch the top of your foot and pull the heel to the body, you want to make sure that you're not lifting the leg because I need to get the hip flexor open also. This is not as effective in opening what we're trying to open up as a combo with the hip flexors and the quadriceps. It will work. It's helpful, but it's not the best. So now let's get to Ekapada, Suttivarasana, and we'll all try to go into that as far as we can. When I do the practice, because I'm on a hardwood floor, it's if you're on carpet, then that's a big plus for, with regards to this pose, but it helps the top of my feet if I place a blanket down. So that's to soften the, the uh, torture of the shins and the tops of the feet, those muscles right there being stretched in a way that they don't get stretched a lot. Then I'll take two blankets, and every time I practice is different. So I'm going to do it as if um, my muscles were really super cold, and I needed some extra height. So I'm going to fold two blankets like this, stack them up on top of each other, but sit on a block that will be here. So I'll move this onto my little setup right here, and then I'll put this here. You see? Now, I could put another blanket here. I also have bolsters. Or I could just sit up and lean back. So that means, and let's do, I'm going to turn this way and do my right leg first. And I hope that you'll go ahead and do your right leg first too. And that will help all of us with instructions. When I get here, sometimes this is so intense that we don't really need to do much more than just lean back. The idea is to get this and this as open as much as possible. And if I'm propping myself up on my arms while leaning back, and this knee is on the floor, then that will work. That will help. Because you see, I've gotten rid of the bend in here. I'm not sitting up in flexion. I've opened up and lengthened the front of the pelvis. I've got the quad stretched here, the pelvis open here. It would be nice to go a little further back. And I'm going to, but, but some of us might not be able to. And some of you are all the way, you know, props, completely props. So I'm going to come down on my elbows and see how that's doing. 
And then I'll come all the way down and see how that's doing. I need to scoot my blankets up just a little bit. So my head, the head should be supported at the level of your spine. You don't want your head hanging back. Some people just let the head hang back and the neck is all compressed, but not us. We won't let that happen. Your right knee needs to, if my knee pops up, what's that doing? That is now inflection. I need that to be down. I need this to be open, the hip, the front of the hip open. And the knee pops up, and it, it's not doing the work. And also, it will sneak out to the side to try to, it's like, i got to get away from this. So I'll bring the knee over to the left foot. Remember, there's a lot of different ways to do this. So if you've got your props, sofa cushions, use your dogs, your cats, your pets, your, if there's somebody at home, just lean over them. Something that you do to help you find a way to stay and let that open up. Another pose where people will flee to the restroom. Be gone for days. <laughs> but it's okay. We have gotten one side done. You're 50% done. Let's go ahead and come up. Excellent. Now I'm going to switch sides. You won't be able to see this side. I'm not going to turn myself around because you're trained professionals. I've got my left leg in that same time. Oh, you do need to check. I'm going to go ahead and set this leg back up for just a second, remind you of a few things to check. Look down at the foot that's in the pose. This should be your left foot now. I'm sticking with my left and right. That little toe, side of your foot, needs to be on the floor. Mm -hmm. And you need to have this thigh bone pointed straight ahead, not out to the side and not rolling in. Don't be on the inside of your foot and think that's okay, because that twist in the ankle goes all the way up into the knee joint. So we have to have that knee lined up correctly. Now I'll switch sides, because I want to do the stretch too. Ah, here we go. Remember, I might make it back here. As long as I can look down and see a nice opening in the front of my body. Or I could come down to my forearms and stay here. That's not as comfortable. And I might as well go ahead and put another blanket just under the shoulder blades. But here I have it. Everything feels good. Now, you see the ribs lifted a little bit? We want to try to get those down. So what I'm going to do is lift the pelvis tuck the pelvis under and then sink these ribs to the floor while keeping the left knee down. Sink the ribs, knee down. Sink the ribs, knee down. It's not a back bend yet, so the, the spine should not be arched. Just keeping my hands here to remind myself. Sink down to the floor, ribs. Sink down to the floor. Remember, you can do this in standing. You can do it lying on your side too, but it still will not be as effective, but it is a way. It is a way. But this is the method, this practice will get you ready for your back bends. Okay, it is time. Go ahead and use your arms to help you up. Stretch both of your legs out and pump your thighs. I'm going to come off the block and just sit in Dandasana and pump the thighs. Okay, good. Now we'll just get into some simple back bends. The first one is Shalabhasana. Remember in the sun salutation when we got to what we called Sarpasana, we did that saying we wanted to just wake up the back extensor muscles. Now, that was quite a while ago, so we're going to do it now in Shalabhasana. Just lift up into a locus and wake up the muscles that we're going to use and ask to help us in a back bend. That's pretty active. So, that's number one. I'm going to move these props over to the side, and this one I can just leave here. It's nice and comfortable for my pelvis. Arms by my side, palms face. Be on a blanket for your forehead if you want your neck long. Lengthen your legs back and then inhale up you come. Again, my back muscles, my buttock muscles, the hamstrings, all the extensors are working together to lift the body up. 
you know, waking up so that I can remind them of their work. And then down you come. Just one and take a break. Now Bhujangasana, the cobra pose, hands in place. Some of us only go to the forearms in sphinx. So uh, please practice the variation of cobra or sphinx. That is right for your body. Make sure the back of the pelvis is locked. Remember, uh, in the sunset um, earlier, we tried to make sure the sacrum moved one way and the shoulder blades, space between the shoulder blades moved the other. That's what we try to do now. Move those two points apart, and then what's in between moves into the body. So that the back bend is not jammy. It's like pulling the two ends of a rubber band apart. One end is the tailbone. The other end is the spot right between the shoulder blades. They go in opposite directions and lengthen. And then down you come. Now in that practice, I kept my elbows bent to show you that you could. In the second practice, I'm going to straighten my elbows and to make the, the arms work like legs, to make them like the pillars of support. So um, if that is hard for you, but you can take the arms a little forward, the, the hands can slide a little forward and you do it, then fine. Just don't do it where you feel, feel either jammed in the back or the shoulders shrug. Okay, let's try that. Inhale up you come. And then if you need to, the hands can just wiggle a little forward and then you can straighten the elbows. Ah. Now you don't have to do that if you're able to come up and the elbows will straighten in the normal hand position. Some of us have that much bend in the spines. And then down you come. Wonderful. Let's rest a moment and let the forehead rest on the forearms or either on the floor. Let your neck feel long and soft. Now, from here, are you like, don't we get more rest than that? No, you don't need it. <laughs> we have plenty of time for rest. We got a whole night coming back. up soon where you can sleep. I'm going to move this mat back just a little bit because we're getting ready to do up dog and down dog. Dog pose helps prepare you for, down facing dog even, helps prepare you for back bend. So when you're here, we talked about that earlier, how the shoulder blades widen helps create stability. The pelvis lifting away from the wrist helps create length in the spine. So you're getting ready, and then you go right into a back bend. Upward facing dog. There, Arjun Mukha Shanasana. And then exhale back to downward facing dog. And inhale into upward facing dog. And back to downward facing dog. And again, now if this is uncomfortable for you, you can always do dog, and then you can come down and do like the cow back then, or even the cobra on the um, straight arms. So you have a couple of options. Let's do about two more. Down dog. Up dog, or child's pose and cobra, or child's pose, or, or uh, a dog pose and uh, the cow pose. Good. And then you're done. Now we're going to do a little bit of that back bending over the chair back. But you've got to look around your home and see what you have. And I have, I have a metal folding chair, which is perfect. Now we're not going to do the variation because we don't know that everybody's got this at home, where you have to have your feet on the chair legs. We're just using it to get this open in the front and the spine to move a little bit more into the back body. So I'm gonna just use the wicker chair to show you that this is all I could find. But when you have a chair, 
and the back is a little high, see how high that is? That means that I may need to sit up on a blanket in the chair seat. So I'll do that. I'm going to add a blanket in the chair seat to help me sit a little higher. I'm sitting here like this. And that's too high, so I'm going to come down a little bit. And then I'm going to turn sideways. You see what happens sideways. Turn this way. So you just sit, and i got to scoot out a little bit on the edge. And again, I just pick this chair because it's just what I have around the house. And you say, but all my chairs have high, my kitchen chairs are this high in the back. I like to sit at the chair at the table and feel like I'm the queen or the king. So I got really tall chairs. That's fine. But you've got a sofa, right? And you got a sofa arm. You can lean back on like this. You just sit down on your soft, relaxed sofa, but your back is a little firm and you just back bend over it. And as you're back bending over, you put your hands here, hold your fist back just a little bit. Yeah, there we go. And then lean back with your elbows wide. I'm holding my head so the head doesn't drop. And right there between the shoulder blades, so the back of the chair, or whatever it is I'm back, leaning back over, supports right there about L, I'm uh, sorry, T, T5, between the shoulder blades, right there. Now let's take some deep breaths into this very stuck spot here. This is very similar to what we did earlier in Paryangasana. And then up you come. Use your hands to help lift you up and lift your head safely so that your neck never gets compressed in your back bends. Never let your neck get compressed. Okay, so now we do a camel. Not everyone's favorite, but you have, again, furniture that you can use to help you. So if you have a chair, you and the, the, your chest is tight and it's hard for you to uh, go back very far for the floor. This is really a sweet way. You've got enough height to hold on to the kitchen chair or any kind of chair and simply do your camel here. And notice I'm just lifting the chin without taking the head back. So I'm creating a little extension here in the neck without creating the compression. But some of us practice enough and have opened ourselves enough that we can go back to hands on the heels or hands on the blocks. Now, place your hands at the very top of your pelvis. Uh, if you're using a piece of furniture, go ahead. You don't have to do this part. You just open the front body and take your hands to that furniture. But if we're going to bend back a little bit more, adjusting the pelvis before we go back is going to be very important. So I pull the pelvis down with my hands and lift the front of the pelvis up powerfully <clears throat> with the pit of the abdomen. Now the hands release and find their way to the blocks or down to your feet. And then, again, you have to find where is the neck going to be happiest. So if I look up and the chin is pointed to the ceiling and my neck feels fine and I can still talk, then this will be your place. Be strong in your legs and inhale up you come and then exhale have a seat. So now to counter that, especially if you were able to get your neck in ex full extension, we will do a downward facing dog. And then we'll get the hamstrings opened up for Shavasana. So let's go ahead, downward facing dog. Let your neck be free and relaxed. And then come down and lie on your back. When you do the hamstring stretch this time, it's not like we do at the beginning of class. You keep the left knee bent and the foot flat on the floor. And then take your right leg up. And as you're taking that right leg up, to stretch it, you just count three breaths. 
and then you switch sides. Three breaths. And then you switch sides. And you do that three times because when the knee is bent and the pelvis can tilt, it'll help release the back muscles better. And we need that after we do a lot of back bending. So keep repeating that three times three. And then when you're done, go ahead and set yourself up for Shavasana. Get yourself extremely relaxed. And when you're lying down, relaxed on the floor, what I would ask you to do is to just feel. Feel and notice, well, we did a lot of things that prepared us for the upward facing dog, but we didn't do, maybe you did, it would be okay if you did. But um, in the sequence for tonight, I didn't have that in the class, just to be mindful of those of us who are not quite ready. But what I want us to notice is, how did the shoulders feel? How does the thoracic spine and the front chest cavity feel? And how do the hips feel? Let's rest. Take a slow deep breath into your body and let that go. Bend your knees. Rock your legs back and forth. And roll to your right side. And then use your arms now, push into the floor and come to sit. I'm always very grateful to be able to practice with so many wonderful, loving people. The light within me sees and honors the light within you. Namaste.